BoxingVoice.com here in Las Vegas at the MGM with the two division world champion Terry Harper. Terry, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Here uh, on vacation or holiday, as yeah. as you all call it, uh, saw you started in California, worked your way to Vegas. How's uh, how's the holiday been treating you? Amazing. Um, obviously, I've only been to America once before, and that was for the Katie Taylor fight in New York, and this is completely different. Obviously, I started in LA and. Uh, very chilled and uh, everyone's so laid back and friendly and then coming over to Vegas uh, it was just like 100 miles an hour but again like ev everyone who we've met has been very friendly and just loved it really we go home tomorrow and then um, it's back to reality and back in the gym now we were talking a bit off camera um what's been your favorite experience uh, I've seen you on many beaches in, in California in the LA area, saw you at the Dodgers game, saw you at the Usher show. How was that? Um, amazing. I, like when we were watching Usher and we came we came back um, back to the hotel, we were just saying we've just watched Usher live in middle of in middle of the desert and that's all I've said since we've been here. I'm like we're in the middle of the desert, like it's, it's absolutely insane. And I just feel like we've been picked up and dropped off on another planet and um, it's, it's, it's an, been an amazing experience and hopefully one day we can get back over here and uh, be fighting here. Now, did you purposely stay at the MGM because you'd like to have a fight here one day to kind of, or was, was it just coincidence that this is uh, the hotel that you booked? Um, truthfully, we we're going to stay at the link, um, but the only reason we changed it is due to, like, I think it was the... The sun doesn't come out over the pool and we wanted a tan so gotcha. we're looking at a good pool area and you want MGM and I just said it's got to be MGM so uh, yeah it's, it's been nice we've been walking around all the hotels and it's just um, we went into the Paris hotel the other day and that, honestly absolutely crazy. Now you told me you walked to the stratosphere. I couldn't believe it. That's like, you said it was two and a half hours. Yeah. That, you know, anybody that knows Vegas, that is on the complete opposite side of the strip. But a very well-deserved holiday after your victory and your title defense just a few weeks ago. How are you feeling coming off that big win? Um, obviously, it's, it's a bit of mixed emotions really off with the fight. I've so got what happened with Cecilia and that fight not happening. Um, not being able to perform on on the big like the big event with Kate Taylor and Chantal Cameron, and um, I was worried about that. Uh, but I was just so grateful to Matt Truman and Eddie for getting me out the, the following week so quick and um, fighting Habazin, someone who I didn't really know much about, and I found it on the night. I I feel like the the full two fight weeks kind of took it out of me. So on the night, I just remembered thinking I just want to get in the ring and get the job done and come away and just have a little bit of chill time so uh, there were things in the fight that I weren't happy with but I guess I just got the job done and um, I, I, I've come away with a lot more confidence now just knowing that I can just jump in the ring and, and hold my own really and that I want to push on for the big fights now and that, I feel like that's at the stage of my career that I'm at and uh, hopefully we can get the Cecilia f uh, fight over the line again because I know it had a great response from fans and and everyone else in the boxing world really and um, Cecilia's got, got all my respect and um, it'd be great to share the ring with, with, with a, a true champion and um, yeah just see, where, just see where it goes once I'm back really. Now uh, before we get into the big fights I gotta ask you uh, how was it making that decision usually when we see a last minute fighter pull out you know, there's a whole nother training camp. At least it gets pushed back a month, month and a half. You know, we saw it last year uh, with the Queen's passing, how the Clarissa card had to be pushed back approximately five weeks or so. What made you want to take it, you know, just a week later? It was the longest camp. I'd, be, I'd been in the gym since November. Um, we were originally told I'd be out in February, so I trained over Christmas and New Year and stuff like that. And then I've had numerous fight dates pushed back. We were then told March, then April, should have been fighting at Sheffield Arena in front of my home crowd. And then Ed were like, can you, can you hold on a few more weeks for the Kate Taylor card? And um, I was just buzzing, like it was such a great event to be part of. And then obviously when that happened in the morning of the fight, I was good and I thought, I can't, I've been in the gym so long and training, I feel like I'd, I'd peaked and I just needed to, needed to fight. So, the opportunity came um, to fight Habazin uh, the following week and we just said yeah, uh, for me there are no other choice, it's the boxing game and 
um, these things happen and uh, I had full confidence in myself and, and my, my preparation for the fight that I could just get in there with anyone and, and get the job done really. Now, I want to ask you because coming off the Bumgarner loss, uh, we saw you move up to 35. You fought for, I think it was like a super continental uh, belt there. Why the jump all the way to 54? I wanted to be world champion again. Um, I know it was a bit of a massive jump. Um, um, I'm naturally, I'm not an 155 pound fighter. I, I, I walk what? around uh, probably at one, 152 um, naturally, and that's without um, wow. stripping any weight or anything. So. Um, I'd definitely be able to drop down to 147 and 140 comfortably. Um, but yeah, again, it's, it was the fact that I saw an opportunity to become world champion again. And um, we took it, uh, just and, and it, it paid off. And now there's, there's, there's one big fight up in this division that we won. And, and I feel like as a fighter, you want, you want to be, be undisputed. And so there's, there's things happening, not on my half, but on... Natasha Jonas, she's, I think she's looking at moving back down. Well, she's fighting. Well, she, yeah, she's, yeah. Fi she's fighting Candy Wyatt for the vacant IBF welterweight title, but she still holds the two belts yeah. at 54. Um, you know, the first fight with between you and Natasha was uh, phenomenal, came out to a draw, and I think that's a fight that everybody wants to see again, and I think that's a fight that you both want again, or at least you do. Yeah. Do you believe she she wants that fight, I, or do you think it's a I priority feel, for her? I feel like it's a bit of a, po like a poker game, really. So I feel like um, she's either playing the game to try and get more money, or she's weighing up her options and and trying to get herself uh, her, the money that she's obviously after. So uh, I feel like it's more disappointing for the boxing fans, really. Um, <laughs> People want to see that, like you said, it, it was a great fight, controversial, uh, whichever way you look at it. Some people thought Tash won, some people thought I won, ended in a draw, it won nominated fight of the year. Uh, it's, yeah, it'd just be a shame uh, as a boxing fan for that not to happen. Wanted to ask you because I feel like lately in the sport we've seen more and more fighters be outspoken on, on, on mental health. However, I feel like most of the fighters have been men. Uh, I remember seeing an interview. I think I think it was the first interview you did after the Bumgarner loss, where you said that you didn't want to get on social media after the fight because you didn't want to see none of the trolls or none of the negativity. Uh, how was it mentally for you to come back and 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 just uh, overcome that moment? Because it doesn't stop in the ring, you know, that loss uh, carries with you. So how were you able to, to just overcome that and, and, and handle it in the best way possible? Um, yeah, at first I took it bad and like I was saying it was worse than a heartbreak. I remember for a good, good week, I was crying myself to sleep, just thinking I've let, let everyone down. It's, it's, it was weird, it felt like, uh, I think that's the thing for me. I was worried of, that I've, at the thought of letting people down and, um, Luckily, I have got great people around me and my partner, Gem, and stuff. And shit, like, do you know what? It, what what best thing was? People who who are who are love and my family and friends and that they just took piss. Like they made it into a joke, and it is what it is. It's boxing, and uh, you play with fire, you're gonna get burned. It is what, like it made me. It, to be honest, it probably it was a blessing in disguise. It allowed me to take a step back and realise that. Um, Losing your own is not be all and end all, and it's just uh, it just adds a bit uh, a bit more character to you, to you and uh, just yeah. I don't, I don't know. I just think I surround myself with great people, and uh, they I just say they help me get get over it. And now I go into the ring knowing that uh, not putting any pressure on myself about losing or anything, and not that I want to experience a loss again. But um, it just made me realise this. There is more to life than just being like, I kind of wrap myself up in this boxing bubble and we're just obsessed with boxing and not, not appreciating every other thing in I, life as well. I think it's weird too because I feel like it's only in boxing where that stigma of that oh is so important, you know, we don't see it in mixed martial arts, any other professional sport, everybody loses so it's something that happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think for you especially, like, you lost to now the undisputed champion and uh, 
it's a loss that when people look at it, it's they know Alicia Bumgarner is one of the best in the sport. So just uh, your thoughts on how she's been able to carry with the win and now on the spew and, you know, avenge her loss now July 15th. She's looking to avenge her loss against Christina Leonardo too. Just your thoughts on how she's done since uh, your fight with her. Yeah, so it, honestly, I'm like, I'm very happy and very chuffed for it. Like, it's, it's amazing. And, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of, fan of Alicia and I just think she's she's great and um, I love her style, I love I love her, like, her character and, and, and just everything, I think she puts on a great show and she's, she's a great powerful puncher and stuff and I experienced it first hand and yeah she had a great fight with Michaela Mayer and she's, she's out there just, just getting it done, getting the job done, she's in these great big fights and After yeah. your fight with her, did you expect for her to do what she did to Michaela? I gotta I love your humor, like... I feel like, um, yeah, like I said, Lissy is a power puncher and us girls are really, like, really draining, draining themselves down to, to that weight. You, you could, like, I can remember the first round in the ring and I got, she jabbed me to my stomach and I was just like, oh, I'm in for a long night here, but luckily I wasn't in for a long night because it only lasted four rounds, but, um, yeah, just, I felt the power, I felt the power straight away and obviously she's, she's naturally out that way and a lot more comfortable for her and, she showed it on the night. Now, uh, just your thoughts. How do you think she fares against somebody like Katie, Chantel, Amanda, you know, some of the other names in and around the lightweight division? Uh, yes, yeah, I feel like they're all great. They all, they, I think the thing with Alicia is she's a lot more, uh, she's a little slow with the pace and stuff. And like I said, she's, she's got she's a power puncher. And, um, it's boxing, all it takes is one punch, really. It's dangerous, very dangerous fighter. And like I said, I really like her style. And uh, I remember when I was fighting her myself and I was trying to hit her with shots and she was just making me miss. And I'm thinking, oh, what, like, what is happening here? And um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, I'm just bothering on to it. No, 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 you're, you're fine. Uh, wanted your thoughts. Obviously, Katie, that was a big upset. Did you see that coming? I mean, I feel like she's been. Her vulnerabilities have been shown in, in, in previous fights, but nobody's really been able to get over that hump. Were you surprised that Chantel Cameron was able to do it? Uh, yeah, but no, just because um, obviously this is a fight that Chantel's been wanting for forever and um, it's probably gave her that extra extra motivation and extra, like, um, extra gear during the fight. But the thing for me, I was thinking, Kate is, Kate is in front of her home crowd and uh, I feel like it's gonna give her that extra that, boost. Yeah, in the, during the fight when times get when times get tough and and stuff. But Chantel's just very, uh, she's just constant and relentless with her with her um, with the punches and stuff. And she, like she's shown it on the night. She was on Katie all night. Katie from from the second round, we were saying she, Katie looked tired. Obviously, um, it's hard work running really and being on the back foot and. I feel like Chantal just broke down and again a great fight though and props to both ladies for putting it, but putting it all on the line really and still, still allowing the sh for the show to go ahead and a great night for the Irish fans. Now uh, Natasha's fight if I'm not mistaken is uh, next weekend will you be in attendance? No. No? No. I probably still Tuned have a, in? I still have a jet lag probably. Uh, I'll be watching yeah from home and um, you know what? It's, it's like it's boxing, like best, like best to both. And uh, I feel like Tasha's just setting herself up now for uh, what's going to give her the best options, money-wise, and, and for the future and stuff. And if that fight can't happen next for you, I mean, is is going down to forty-seven or maybe even forty for a fight? Is that an option for you, or would you like to stay and defend? Yeah, it depends what happens with the belts. Obviously, if Tasha goes down, uh, goes down and gets a belt, she has to then make the decision what she, uh, which one she's which one she's vacating and stuff. And if that frees up the belts up here at 154, then um, that could be a fight then for me and Cecilia to uh, to have.
that and yeah it's just I, like I just leave that stuff to Andrew and um, but that's the plan um, I just let it all unfold and, and just do what I'm told really when I get out. Well, Terry, thank you so much uh, for your time on your holiday. I know that you're not, you're here for pleasure, not business, but uh, appreciate it again. And can't wait to see you back in the ring. Thank you. Thank you. What up, YouTube family? Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.